do a few slides. Um, I went to England and they make rush carpets in England. This is a very traditional thing that's been done for hundreds of years. They used to screw their houses with rushes and cattails and that was their way of keeping the floor, their, their carpets. They used to walk through these things and, and then they discovered how they could make mats and they could work on mats. Um, a friend of mine actually made one for a historic house. And so I thought it might be interesting for you just to see how you could do this. Although they are rushes, you can also do this with cattails, so that we can do both. That was just them sitting in the outside where they were making them. Where, where we've gone to England now, everybody. I'm, not, I'm going forward or backwards. And that's what they made. Amazing carpets. They braided strips, and you'll see them doing it. And then they sewed the strips together, and they, they braided a very narrow strip and it made the ends. And these are sort of traditionally historic things. I think the next one sideways. I didn't dare do it because I thought I'd upset the whole bag. Hold on. I'm sorry, you have to put that into the light. <laughs> but there they are. They're the brushes that they're using are in that sort of wood thing. And they've already been soaked. And the girls are taking them out of that trough. And they're weaving them. They're braiding them. Um, and this is what they're doing. They are standing up, like on a better picture, it's slightly out of focus this one. Um, they're standing up and they're doing either a five strand, a seven strand, or a three strand braid. And they just keep going on and on, that's what they do with rubber gloves. Next picture's a little better. Can you see them? That's their job. And they just braid and braid and braid and it goes up over there and then it falls down and it makes lovely great big curls of, um, what is it called? It's actually a little bit of a trick to keep your braid even. And although it looks very simple when you're doing it, when you try, they keep them beautifully straight. The edges are very straight. And so then they are just taken, and you see she's got a sailor's thing on her hand, and she is sewing those strips together. And they're all sewn up together like that. And then, isn't that, I love the old weights. Yes. They stretch them out and flatten them and put them on the table once they've sewn them. And I mean, it's very much a hands-on operation. And that's how they look. And they do the very fine braid to go over the end where the um, rough bits are. So this is something that's very traditional and something that's very... They also use them, they do a three-strand braid and they make their, their um, waste paper baskets. I really want to bring one of those home, but they were very heavy. So I never made one. But I think it's interesting to see how they go around. They just pile up their braid and um, stitch it. And again, she's got the, the thing on her hand, so the lead, she can push its needle through. These are a few things you can make with rashes. Um, these are baskets made, this is in England too. And you can see it's got a woven bottom, and then it's just built up. They're, they are surprisingly strong, considering what they are. But of course, they're nothing like, you know, you can't, you only can put light things in, you can't really put any things in. Um, we've done that using twisted cattails and rushes, using the, um, the, the egg basket form, this is a potato basket form. That was using the red dogwood. Um, I'm sure most of you know what the red dogwood mm -hmm. is. It's lovely and red in the winter because the sun reaches the bark. Mm -hmm. in the, in the, I mean, the winter it gets sun. In the summer, you'll find the bark of the red dogwood is green. So you don't collect it in the summer. Okay. The, red, the red stays quite well. A little, little mat, paper brushes. Um, another way of making a, a carpet. Um, this I met somebody who made this, and you can see that this is much, very much like our old woven ride ones, round and round and round. Mm -hmm. um, so that's another idea of using the braid. Oh, this is for you, Nancy. And I'm sorry it's not quite in focus. Do you remember you were talking about the oil lamp? Mm-hmm. Yes? Yeah. Well, there they are. That's, that was what I took that picture in England. Oh, and oh. It's, it's the oil candle using the... Um, right. These are the little bits of rush here. Is that a wick then? And they yeah. use it as a wick. Um, I'm quite sure how it happens. They light one end. And I presume they have oil down no, here. No, they've dipped the whole thing. That's what this they other dip the container. Whole thing, do they? Yeah, that's what the trough is. Okay. It's dipped in tallow. Okay. So that's a very primitive candle. It must make terrible smoke. Anyway, I had that picture.
picture from a museum, and I knew you would be interested in Thank lighting you. your house. I tried. <laughs> it didn't work. <laughs> Um, and now this is something else that I did at Halliburton. We made stools and chairs twisting cattails. And uh, this is something that I'm sure quite a lot of you know about uh, rush seating. And you can do exactly the same thing with cattails. You just get them and you twist them. We had a huge workshop because I did this with um, this other fellow, John, who came from Virginia. He was quite a wild man. Anyway, he, he, made, he made the chairs and the stools with him, and we did the tops with me. It was absolute chaos, actually. And he paid his mouth open, and we had a lot of fun. I think we had 20 people doing this. It was agony, but uh, some people made stools and some people made little ones. But there's somebody who made her stool, see? And she made the stool using willow, and um, in, in, the, in the wood, you know, the sort of carpentry end. And then we made the tops with the, with the cattails. And it was actually quite an exciting week. And I think we all finished. Um, just something else, you can also weave them. And I bought a little mat. Um, I spent a little time in Bangladesh, and they weave beautiful rugs and beautiful floor wraps, floor cut covering, using a very strong warp. And they weave it horizontally on the ground. And um, I thought I would make little mats. I bought the one I made. This can be made very simply on a little tapestry loom. And you just weave in either cattails or rushes and make a little mat. And I made, I tell you, I, thought, I bought one. And this is the last pitch, and that's a hat. They make them in England. They wear them on um, May the 1st. What is it? Anyway. May Day. Um, yes, they do that funny dancing. They'll Morris oh, dance. The the Morris, yeah, the, the Morris dancers have to wear oh, these hats. And my friend Olivia, who came over and taught rush basket making here, um, makes quite a lot for the for the people when they rush around around the Maypole. So that's a hat. So there we are. That's just a very short. I didn't want to bore you with lots of thick slides, but I thought that would give you an idea of um, you know the world out right there because <laughs> rushes were used a lot in England, and um, you know it's quite surprising really that we don't, although we've got. Them. You know, it's something that we have in our environment that we don't use. And I think, oh, I think it would take you forever to make a carpet, but they probably are magnificent. The historic houses in England have to be um, reproduced in their whatever era, medieval era. They have to have these carpets. Um, and I think some of the churches do too. So that's why the industry is still going on. But you can see it's not exactly high tech. <laughs> it's very, very time consuming. So, of course,